Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at heroes which you should build out of a guide that was actually shared over on the Chinese servers. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna break this down, guys. It's gonna break down the factions. It's gonna break down heroes. Now there is a couple kind of variations and we're gonna go through that again as we're going through the guide. So let's go ahead, we're gonna hop over it. Let's take a look at it. All right, guys, so here it is. All hero rank list, as you can see, 82023 by Mr. Box. Again, this I dropped into Google Translate. Overall, this was shared over on Reddit. Um, it was all in, I believe Chinese is the translation. So looking through here, guys, we're gonna go through all of the different factions and then kind of show you, and I love it does have the recommended practice or the recommended builds in here, which is very true to the guide that we put out when I put out the tier list, things of that nature. Now you'll notice this is broken a little bit different into the list that we have here. It has the specific hero. It has the Cursed Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, the Treasure Hunt, and then the recommended build without there, within there, which is awesome to see that these heroes are actually ranked in a bunch of different game modes. Now remember, these heroes, it does not include the campaign, it does not include the towers. There's quite a few places that they are not seeing a lot of utility anymore, but you'll see going through here again, we're gonna break it down kind of faction by faction. As we go through here, the first one looking at the light bearers, Looking near, guys, we do have Palmer SSS across the board. 30960 is the ideal build for him. Even if you don't take him to the plus 60 um, engraving, plus 30 on him will work incredibly well. But again, we're just gonna be covering the recommended practice. Now again, it, it seems very expensive with some of these heroes to really build out. But remember, when you look at Palmer, when you look at the Awakened version of Belinda, they're the top tier heroes currently in AFK Arena, which make a very, very big difference. And you'll also notice within these tiers, guys, is we do have like the Awakened version of Thane, the Awakened heroes, and their power is significantly higher than a lot of other heroes, which is the reason why this is not really more of a tier list, but this is more of a recommended build. Now, looking here at the Awakened version of Belinda, S, S, and then A in the treasure hunt, um, I don't know why when she is best in slot within a team in the treasure hunt, why I would only put her at an A, I would actually put her a little bit higher. Then we get into the Awakened version of Thane. Again, Cursed, Corridor, Treasure Scramble. Remember that rotation, A, S, and A. And then again, 30960. Same exact with Scarlet, A, S, and B. Treasure Hunt, unfortunately, as a sub, she is being used. But as a primary damage dealer, she unfortunately is not being used anymore. Now we have Rowan, A, across the board, guys. 30333. Now you'll also notice a couple off numbers for engraving. So there are different stats in there that you can engrave to get the 33, to get the 38, so on and so forth. We're not gonna be covering those in today's video because again, we wanna run through this and there's a lot of heroes in here, guys. And I'll also show you the bottom bucket that they have. So getting through here, again, we have B, A, and A, a 203. B, A, and B, 203, 30. Now 30, of course, on Australia that makes a really big difference. And then A, C, and D, 20960 in here again with the engraving. Little bit lower signature item on both Estrilda and Fergenius, um, making kind of a build. And the same with Rain. Guys, a 203 and Rain will do well. Now you'll notice, guys, that that list is pretty short. Now with this list, though, and looking down at it in its entirety for just the Lightbearer faction, majority of those heroes are used on a consistent basis in the three game modes again that we're looking at the Cursed Realm, the Corridor, and the Treasure Scramble within there. Now going down, guys, we get into the Maulers, the Awakened version of Sophia, 30960, Brutus, 30960, you can see SSS, ABA. The Awakened version of Brutus is actually falling out of a lot of formations, which is unfortunate. We are seeing the exact same thing right here for Anasta, that we are seeing her kind of sliding down the tier list as we continue to get new heroes into AFK Arena that have a much higher power level. Um, Anasta and a couple other heroes, again, are dropping down quite a bit. Now, looking at Crisio, Nightmare Corridor, number one slot, best damage dealer that we do have in the current slot in the meta teams. Um, Cursed Realm and the Treasure Scramble, not really used much of any. 303, 44, 44, of course, doing the attack, making sure that you're amplifying the damage. If you can build them to 60, that is advisable. But then we look at our new tiny tank right here, AAB, 30960, again, a lot of these heroes require a significant build out, guys, to be super effective. Now you notice not falling really into the S tier, but the hero is being used in a lot of different game modes. Then we start looking at some of the older heroes that still do kind of have a slot. We have Dresden here, 209.30, even looking at Scrag, 209.30. 
Then we get into Brutus, of course, for the immunity, still being run in a couple. Kren, the exact same way. Entendre, the same. Skarath, and we do have Warwick in here. Warwick, white, so ascended. Guys, doesn't even need anything. Now, with survivability in Warwick, if you build him up a little bit better, he is going to perform a little bit better. But some heroes like Entendre right here, 30930, um, works for these game modes. If you're using her in the corridor, or excuse me, in the tower, you actually want this to a 60 engraving, so she has the ability to actually survive. And even looking at Kren, guys, if you build him out a little bit higher, um, not only is he going to do um, quite a bit more damage because of the stats that he gains, but overall, not a super, super strong build as of right now. You can see guys getting into the B in the C tier right down here, and even with Scrath. Now, looking into our Wilders right here, the Awakened version of Solus, guys, SSA 30960. Again, still being used in a ton of different game modes. Just because she is an older hero in the AFK arena, again, we're not seeing her removed by any means. Um, still kind of being used in a lot of different versions. Now, of course, we have Tamaris, guys, 30933. Again, the 33 on him works incredibly well. Also seeing, of course, the corridor right here when it comes to Trishia, again, works pretty well. Same with Orin S, and you can see, guys, the E60 and the E31 here. All of these are 309s going down the first five heroes. Now, Soros, again, still being used in formations. We are seeing Soros pop up in quite a few formations. Lorzen for the linking doesn't require a big build, but the nine of nine furniture on him does make a big difference, guys. I believe that is the shielding factor that he can do. Then we have Raccoon here, again, still seeing some play in a game mode. And then we have Laika, we have Mishka, and we have a star or Peanut. And again, even though these heroes are a little bit lower, 20360, 30930, even though they did fall a little bit lower on the tier list, it doesn't mean that they are just not being used, guys. They're just being used in less of a capacity than we've seen in the past, where Mishka and Astar might have been, you know, the priority meta number one. They have since been replaced by looking at Tamaris, looking at Trishia, Orin, Nevi. A lot of these heroes have replaced some of the older heroes that we see within the game mode. Then we get into the Graveborn, guys. Look at that. Ivan, number one, almost across the board, guys. Ivan is super, super strong. I want to get him engraved. I already do have him at the plus 30. I don't have furniture on him. I don't have the engraving. Then, of course, Baden. Baden, of course, best in slot within the Cursed Realm. Um, Nightmare Corridor, A. And then, of course, B right there. 30960, doing incredibly well. Then looking at a lot of the regular Greyborns, when you look at Silas, when you look at Graz, when you look at Oden, Edwin, being used in a lot of different game modes doesn't require a super high build with some of these but they're doing effective and still doing an incredible amount of damage. But you'll notice in here, guys, even like with Oden, still does incredibly well in a game mode. The rest of the game modes kind of sliding down a little bit in formations. Then, of course, we do have Hodgkin in here. We have Thorin in here, which I'm not sure exactly. I mean, Treasure Scramble is the reason why players, I still see him in the stall team. Same with Kalthar, guys. Um, still kind of valid in the stall team. And then we do have Damon down here. Damon, of course, an incredible amount of utility still within campaign formations, but overall seeing less of a utility in there. So going up on our top right, guys, this gets into our Celestials. And look at this, guys. Liberta, SSS across the board, 30960. Absolutely, guys, the hero is broken. In my opinion, I didn't know if they were going to nerf him. I didn't know what they were really going to do. Um, but overall, the hero is very broken within a lot of different game modes. Every single game mode is maximizing the damage from this hero. Even running with Awakened heroes in the same formation, even running, let's say, Liberta um, with the Awakened version of Athalia, they're both doing almost the exact same damage, if not Liberta doing a little bit more than the Awakened version of Athalia, which is kind of crazy because of the utility that this hero brings. Now, we do have Demia in here, 30930, again, not doing the 60 engraving, so a little bit lower on here, but still working incredibly well in that S slot. The Awakened version of Athalia, and then, of course, we do have Halos, A, S, and A, still being used in a lot. The Twins, guys, still holding on. That is right, 30938. The Twins still do incredibly well. And there's not another hero that adds the haste aspect that they do, which is super, super effective. We're still seeing Orthos and the original version of Taylene used in a lot of different formations, guys. These two heroes are still showing up as of today, in a bunch of different formations. The Awakened version of Athalia, again, um, this is the stall team that we see right here with the Treasure Scramble, not really used anywhere else at this point. 
Ulna, again, Treasure Scramble holding on right there. We have Morio, we have Tar Tarnos, and we have Flora. Again, the A ranking right here falling in because of the survivability and those stall teams just in the Treasure Scramble. Everywhere else, heroes not really being used. And then, of course, the original version of Athelia in there. And you can see they have kind of a lesser build with those heroes. Then we get into the hypos, guys. That is right, Matria still number one within this game mode. Um, still being used in a ton of formations, even being utilized in a lot of formations where we don't have other hypo heroes, but again, is still seeing a ton of utility. Mortis, the exact same on um, the signature item to 20 is really all that you need, but is still being used in a lot of different game modes. Liberta, um, it doesn't seem like Curse Rom and Corridor at this point is seeing a lot of play that I've noticed. Treasure Scramble or Treasure Hunt, um, 100%. Running Lucila and Liberta together is working incredibly well. Same here, guys. Um, A within the Treasure Scramble with the Awakened version of Aziz. Now, you just need literally one copy just to get the SP effect is really what players are using it for. Then, of course, we have Olgath and we have Lucretia. Um, Lucy still being used in a lot of different game modes. And again, maybe not in the best number one meta team slot that we see within these other game modes. But as a filler, as a sub, definitely a huge, huge priority still build this hero, as well as the Hypo Tower, as well as campaign progression. Guys, I'm in chapter 51, almost a halfway through 51, still using Lucretia in teams to work incredibly well. Now, Kazard, of course, just the red 30. Then we have Frampton, Kinesa, and Rook. Again, not seeing an incredible amount of utility. Even when it comes to the Treasure Scramble, this is just running with Matria and nobody else in those formations. And then we have Aziz and Zorath, again, still seeing a little bit of run within those game modes. Then we get into our dims, guys. As you can see, Amelia and Rem, super, super strong combination in there. Elbeto still doing incredibly well. Same with Mulan, same with Joan, guys. These top five are seeing, again, an incredible amount of utility. Even still seeing the same with Merlin, even they're falling an A in the Treasure Scramble. Now, when it comes to Leonardo, again, A, kind of a build right out there. We have Ainz in here. We do have Queen. We have Ezio, and we do have Yennefer in here. But you can see, guys, a lot of these, again, kind of fall into the Treasure Scramble category or fall in as the substitute categories when it comes to the Curse Realm and the Nightmare Corridor, depending on where they're being used. Now, on the verge of elimination, that is right, guys. These are kind of tower heroes that are not being used a ton outside of the tower. Honestly, running through this list, we have Hendrik, we have Sonya, we have Iran, we have Frel, um, Desira. Most of these heroes, again, are, are not really being used outside of the tower. That is really the only place that we're seeing. And then, of course, they have the version sacrifice. Um, most of these heroes, again, possibly of the tower. If I was starting AFK Arena today, would I build any of these heroes Maybe a one-off, but even looking for Celestials and Hypogens, looking at Zap, looking at Audrey, looking at Wukong, nope, wouldn't build any of those. Even looking at Valoris, looking at um, Mizoth, looking at a bunch of heroes down here, Leofric, nope, wouldn't build all of them. Baby Yaga, Baba Yaga, maybe super situational, um, but all the rest of the Dimensionals probably wouldn't build them at this point. Could pick up Arthur again for a little bit of utility if they release ever a Dimensional Tower, but when you look again at the Graveborns, short of the tower, not really a lot of utility at all for a majority of those heroes. So you can kind of prioritize through a tier list, whatever you want to call it, guys. Even looking here, let's say you're building out Light Bearers. Um, of course, you want Palmer in there. Um, again, just thinking of like a wish list, looking at Palmer, looking at Scarlet, um, looking at Rowan, looking at Rosaline, looking at Guineas. Um, pretty clear wish list when it comes to heroes that you're seeing in here and the utility of the heroes that we are seeing within this game mode. So right guys, so again, big shout out to Mr. Box for um, creating this. I like that it includes the recommended builds within here, which is the reason I wanted to share it. I will definitely put a link and I'm gonna drop this in my Discord. So guys, again, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.